If you want to make some money with Blender, the first thing you're going to need is a proper portfolio. It doesn't matter if you're trying to get clients or if you're trying to get hired at a studio, you're definitely going to need a portfolio. Now, this is day three of you watching me make a professional product visualization portfolio from scratch. We're going to move quickly. If you want to learn more about the techniques that you're going to see me use in this video, I explained everything inside my Blender course. You can check that out with the link below. Subscribe to the channel so you can see the next episode. Now, let's get to work. Let's quickly make the bottle first. Get rid of the default cube, shift A, mesh circle, open up the add circle menu and set the number of vertices to 16. Press F to fill, inset with I, extrude up and scale down a little bit. Take these vertices out here with alt right click, then press E to extrude and Z to only extrude on the Z axis. Lift it up to around here somewhere. Now fill with F, inset with I and extrude a little bit further like this. Take this face loop over here and bevel it with control B and scroll up a couple of times so it's nice and round. Press C to enable clipping like this. That way the bevel is going to connect with the neck of the bottle. Select Select everything and merge by distance. Maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger. Now select this face at the top and press X and delete faces. Now select everything with A, press C to activate the brush select tool, scroll down a little bit to make it bigger and use your middle click to deselect the faces at the bottom like this. Now press shift D right click and use alt S to deflate this. That's going to add a little bit of thickness. So now you have a layer on the inside. This is going to be the inside of the little bottle. Check even offset down here. Go to vertex select mode, alt right click, take this edge loop and slide it up a little. Press F to fill, control B to bevel let's make the whole thing a little bit taller by lifting this up on the z-axis now use l to select this entire inner object and press ctrl n we're going to open up this viewport overlays menu up here and check face orientation all the faces here have to be blue because that means that's the direction where the normals are facing in this case the outer normal should be facing outwards the inner normal should be facing inwards, so everything's got to be blue. So select everything, press Ctrl N. Deselect everything, press L to select the inner surface, press Ctrl N. When you press Ctrl N, you're going to get this menu down here. Check inside here. Now go to edge select mode and select these two edge loops and go to W bridge edge loops disable face orientation now you got your little bottle in object mode press ctrl 2 to add two levels of subdivision surface as always we're going to select these edges shift g select similar face angles also the edges around the base of the neck and on the inside here ctrl b to bevel them you only want to have two segments here in a shape value of one now go object shade smooth i'm going to take this edge loop and slide it up with double g and slide this one down a little bit with double g that's going to make the neck a little bit softer i just think that looks a bit better now let's add a cap you're going to go to edit mode and select this edge loop right here press p and click on separate that's going to duplicate it and separate it to new objects so now you can select it like this scale it up a little fill with f extrude up to around here somewhere take this face and inset it with i delete the face on the inside select the two edge loops like this and bevel them with ctrl b select everything and press ctrl n go to object shade smooth i don't want it to be this tall it looks like one of those guys is guarding the fucking queen so lower this down a little bit select the cap select the bottle ctrl p set parent to object keep transform right now because of the subdivision surface we have a very long curve here so with ctrl r we're going to add another loop cut and bring it up to around here somewhere make sure that the distance between this loop cut and this edge is approximately the same as the distance between this edge loop and this one up here that way the subdivision is going to be under control and you might want to do the same thing on the inside of the bottle now let's make a couple of materials for this Go to the shading workspace, select a cap, add a new material, name this cap. Go to material preview up here, change the base color to black. We're going to reduce the roughness a little bit. Now select a bottle, add a new material, name this glass. Get rid of the principal node with shift A, you're going to add a glass node. Plug that into surface like this. Set the color to orange. Reduce the brightness a little bit so it looks brown. And we're going to slightly increase the roughness. Now let's put together a label which we're going to put on the front of this bottle. And then when we do that, we're going to be able to construct the environment. As always, we're going to go to Canva but you can also do this in Photoshop or in PaintNet or any other program which is going to allow you to create an image with a transparent background. In fact, the background doesn't have to be transparent because we can just use a glass map. But anyway, go to create a design, custom size. We're going to set the width to 1024 and the height to 2048, create a design. Now let's change the background color to black because when you go to Blender and you open up the color wheel to pick a color, you have hue saturation value. Black means that the value is set to zero and you can use this to control a property such as the roughness of this glass, for example, or we can use this to mix two shaders. We're gonna do this in a second, but this black color is going to mean that this is supposed to be transparent and the white color is going to mean that this is going to be opaque. Opaque means opposite of transparent. Now go over here to text and click on add a 
text box. We're going to write something fancy right here. I don't know how to create this letter right here. So I'm going to go to Google and type in Spanish alphabet because I think that this letter is in the Spanish alphabet. Turns out they got every letter with that little wiggly shit at the top, but they don't got E. So here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to go to Canva. We're going to add a new text box where we're going to write this letter right here. I have no idea what you call it. You programming guys are going to know what you call this thing. Now this is a separate text box. We're just going to place it right here. Fuck it. We're good. Let's change the font to something fancy. I'm going to go with this one right here because I like this one. We can do the same thing for this little worm shit. We can select both of these items and group them. We also need a full stop over here at the end, which is going to require us to expand the text box a little bit. Now add another text box where we're going to write this word right here, place that somewhere around here. And finally, we're going to duplicate this one more time. And over here, we're going to write this word that I can't pronounce. This text box has to be a little bit smaller. Now select all three of these and scale them up with alt like this. And once this is done, we're going to go over to file download download again now this image is going to be in your downloads folder so now you can go to blender in this glass material with shift a you're going to add a principled bsdf node place that above the glass node now with shift a you're going to add a mixed color node place that right here and then you're going to add an image texture node which you're going to place right here open up the image which you just downloaded you're going to plug that image texture node into the factor input of the mixed color node plug glass down here into color b and principled into color a i fucked up we're not supposed to use a mix color node we're supposed to use a mix shader node instead because we're mixing two shaders and we're not just mixing colors so plug one here and plug the other here now plug this image texture node into the factor plug the shader into surface we're supposed to go the other way around so glass has to be in the first shader and principle has to be in the second shader input now we're just going to uv map this but before we do that let's apply the subdivision surface modifier select a surface over here from the front press u unwrap go to your uv editor and place that over the text like this in the principle b SDF node set the base color to white. Now you got your materials ready. Let's quickly set up the environment. This environment's going to be extremely simple. We're going to go to the layout workspace. With Shift A, we're going to add a plane. Scale that shit way up like this. We're going to go to side view where we're looking at the text. And with Control Alt Zero, we're going to align our camera here. And now this plane doesn't have to be as large. You want to make it as small as possible, but you have to make sure that you don't see the edge of this plane in the camera view. And it has to go pretty far back. So we are going to scale it up a little bit more and push it backwards like this. Now you're going to subdivide this plane a whole bunch of times with W subdivide. And after we subdivide it, we're now going to use a displacement modifier to make it look like liquid. So go to the modifiers tab, add modifier, deform, displace. Click on new right here to generate a new image. And now you're going to go over here to the texture workspace. Here, you're going to change the type from image or movie to clouds. And clouds is going to allow you to make textures of all sorts. As you can see right now, it looks like Minecraft when you use that setting where it generates the ridiculous mountains in your world. So we're going to go back to modifier properties and change the strength to something like 0.1. I can't really see anything. So go to materials, add a new material, make this material black and reduce the roughness so it's shiny objects shade smooth and now back in the texture properties you're going to change noise basis to Voronoi f4 that looks a little bit more like water increase the depth to something like four or five increase the scale to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.8 play around with these settings a little bit more until you figure out something that looks a lot like water i'm going to subdivide this one more time even though it's going to slow shit down quite significantly but it's going to look better i think this looks pretty good now we're going to lift this up above the scene like this go to camera view and we're going to rotate Rotate this a little bit around the z-axis then rotate it sideways like this select the camera go to output properties change the resolution to something like 1280 by 1280 now press g and double z and move your mouse down to move the camera backwards but then go to camera settings increase the focal length like this now with shift a you're going to add a plane you're going to align that plane with your view now scale it way up press Z to move it backwards on this local Z axis and place it somewhere around here. We're also going to set the pivot point to 3D cursor, shift S cursor to world origin. Now select the camera and press R and double X to rotate this around its local X axis. That way we can change the way the camera sees the scene and it's going to look a little bit better. Now we're going to switch over to the cycles render engine, go to rendered view, and now we can start messing around with the lighting. I currently got an HDRI. I don't like how the HDRI works, so I'm going to go over to the shading workspace switch here from object to world now change the background strength here from one to zero now when you go to rendered view it's going to look almost completely dark so first of all we'll shift a we're going to add a new area light which we're going to place above the scene like this scale that area light up go to lamp settings and increase the power it's going to be a lot better if we rotate this by 90 degrees and place it to the side like this also scale it up on the z-axis now while your 3d cursor is still down here and your 3d cursor is the pivot point you're going to duplicate this light with shift d rotate it around the z-axis until you place it on the other side 
side like this. We just want to place it in the background here so that when you look at this from the camera view, you have this little light edge over here. We're also going to scale this up on the Z axis and that way this reflection is going to expand up to this part as well. Now we also need some light over here in the front. So duplicate this one more time and bring another one of these over here to the front like this. As you can see now, when we rotate this around the Z axis, you have this reflection in the front. We're gonna have to make this light a lot wider to make the reflection lighter. So place the cursor on the light with shift S cursor to selected. Now press S to scale and then shift Z to exclude the Z axis from the scaling. That way you're only going to be scaling on the Y and the X axis. So it's only going to get wider and not taller. That's going to make the reflection wider as you can see right here. And when you're doing this, the light is distributed across a larger area, which means the light is less intense, which means we got to increase the power a little bit. Select the background, add a new material and make that material black like this. And now place the cursor up here and with shift, you're going to add another area light. That area light is going to be shining onto this background like this. Make that much stronger. We're also going to select this lamp and change the shape here from square to disc. That way the reflection is going to be round and we got a lot more control. I'm also going to add a light to the inside of the bottle. So with shift A, I'll place the cursor onto the bottle. Shift A, add a new area light. We're going to flip that sideways and move it along its local Y axis to place it inside the bottle like this. Crank up the power, scale it up on the local Y axis to make it longer. And we're going to try rotating it around the local Y axis to see what kind of placement is going to give us the best reflection on the inside. As you can see, if I place it on the left side over here, I get this type of reflection right here. So if I further increase the power, it might end up looking pretty cute. You got to play around with the position of that light to make sure that it looks good and you got to play around with the positions of all the other lights you got to figure something out every scene is going to be different your scene is not going to be exactly the same as mine even if you're following along this tutorial i'm also going to select the camera and go to camera properties and check depth of field set the distance so that it's focusing on this border right here i'm going to reduce the f-stop to make everything else nice and blurry and before you know it you got a cool looking scene i'm probably going to spend a little bit more time playing around with the lighting and the environment as will you we're going to set the number of render samples to something like 10 24 because we got a lot of reflective shit we got a lot of glass so we want to have a lot of samples then we're going to go up here to render render image and that's going to be the end of this tutorial make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you see the next episode that i'm going to put out check out the blender course it also includes my ebook let me know what you want to see next i'll see you in the next one